No wonder you like fatten them a bit. <laughs> Morning, y'all. Do you want to meet student number three who's coming on the journey with us all? Right, we're going to meet Chris today. Oh, fancy carpet for my office. But before we meet Chris, question of the day, what's your goals this year? Do you want to get your handicap cut? You're going to buy some new clubs, join a golf club, meet some new friends. What is it? Post in that comment section down below. What's making you play this year? What's driving you to either keep enjoying it, try and enjoy it more? Let me know. Because it doesn't always have to be just getting better. Some people play just to meet new friends. Let's go meet Chris. more so this is Chris guys um, 16 handicap yep from Merseyside playing kind of once or twice a week yeah so he's practicing <laughs> oh is that a shank no, that's and you're saying Iron's approach play could be better yeah more direction driver is okay but can slice Yep. Have you ever hit a draw? Mm, not a draw. No. Um, it's always sometimes happens. I can get a bit quick and come uh, uh, like over the top. Kind yeah, of, and then hit a pull sort of left. Pull left and okay. then it goes, carries on. Okay. So if we look at your numbers, Chris, we've got a club park with the iron, five left. Um, so that's out to win. Mm -hmm. You're happy with what that means? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then your driver is 5.6 left. It's so very similar. Faces around one open to your driver face, but uh, driver pass, sorry. But you can get four close to seven open. Big deviation <laughs> yeah. in that driver face. So you yeah. can have one way close to the path, one way open, which is where we're going to see big misses. And then we're seeing some lies with the driver around zero. So very high handle to get that club delivering a zero with a driver at your height around 5'11", 5'10". Yeah. Um, and it's the same pattern with the iron. So if we look at the iron, we've got some missed strikes happening, but we're not lying that club at all well on the ground. 6.7 toed down with that same out to win path. We need to get you getting a grip of dynamic lie, which hopefully will help with strike. But what it often also does is it calms down path. Okay. Um, because I imagine you would think about, if I was to say you hit more from the inside, so less out to win, yeah. you would think maybe about kind of swinging around your body and really trying to swing to the right, although maybe those ideas. Um, or was it something yeah, similar. Really I've, I've, I've tried it a few times and it feels really weird to yeah. because well, with your hand or as high as it gets, yeah, it just would be you would shank a lot if you tried doing it from the inside, I yeah. think, which yeah. is a shot you're already a bit worried about. Doing. Yeah. There's a lot to fix in there, we, yeah. we can improve on that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, up to the top and stop for me. Stay in there. That way. You can think about it two ways. You can think about it going that way, but you can also, what helps lots of people is going that way. Okay. So your standing up of the shaft is encouraged by the worst term in golf, which is lag. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Creating what is feeling of casting and more space never slows any of my students down if anything speeds them up. Mm. Never creates casting but gives them a centre of gravity of club that drops below hand path nine, a lot. Yeah. Yeah, with the ball. What do you think? That you will not do it on that one. Uh, probably a a bit. 3.9 toe down. Yeah. Closer. 
but you can do it more. Yeah. Do the one-handed, left-handed swing for me. It's up to the top. Stay there, put your right hand behind your back. Okay, now hold it up there for a few seconds of trying. So you really start shaking, yeah. that's it. And then just let it go. And then reconnect, yeah, and then pull it through. Let it go and then pull it. Yeah, 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 yeah. Like them at home, them in the garden, that is, yeah. you can't do enough of that. That, you feel the drop there, can't you? Yeah. The club drops behind you. So I'm gonna cross out lots of these demo ones and just go with the last three where I felt like in the last three, like you had a, a four that you would struggle to take to the course now, but we could go, in, like the others were practice, yeah. really crazy practice swings. Yeah. Again, didn't really talk about club path apart from saying that we probably will move it if we go this route. Yeah. Club path is now only 2.6 left. Yeah. It was five left. So the out the win is calming down. The lie is three, two and two, uh, so it's three, three and two, averaging 3.1. Uh, where it was 5.5 toe down. So that is in the space of, we talked, you hit shots. <laughs> I reckon that's in the space of 15, 20 minutes you've yeah. made that change, which is massive. Yeah. Sustaining it and pushing that change on is where the six months come in, but this, that's the idea of what we need to go towards. Let's see if we can take any of this out onto the course. So again, that's the fat that we were seeing inside. Remember yeah. the fort for that, we'll hit another one. Yeah. Get up through that left side, get out of that left side. If you're gonna drop that club, to you it's gonna feel like it's getting to the ground far too early. Yeah. So inside we started to see some fat from Chris, so I told him to both try and get up through his left leg, left shoulder, left hip, moving up as he strikes it. Because as he drops that club behind him, basically it's just falling to the ground much earlier than he's used to, which is why we see that fat. Much better strike, and that's verging on a draw, isn't it? It's not started in the right direction. But did you see the way that ball was curving through yeah. the air? Very yeah. different to your normal cut. Which is yeah. what I think outside here is going to show us. When you change someone's action, like we have quite dramatically in there, where you're used to aiming, like you said in there, I aim up the left and cut it back. Yeah. That might not be appropriate anymore if yeah. we're going to see some different shapes. Much better strike. Yeah. Got away from the ground on that one. Yeah. 80, 90, 100 yards, then I start. You don't, so 80, 90 yards, you do start measuring? Yeah, but I'll, I'll just do it on feel. If I walk up to something and sort of think Yes. Yeah. So this yardage you wouldn't measure, which, what would you call this in your head? 60, 70? Uh, yeah, I would have probably gone 50. Yeah, I'm bad at that. Yeah. Yeah, so <laughs> I'll measure it in a minute, actually. In fact, I'm going to measure it now. Okay. 66. Okay. What did I'm I gonna, say? I landed it 50. I was quite good. <laughs> <laughs> and that's a slope reading, yeah. so it actually uh, is so about is 70. Yeah, yeah. So what loft have you chosen? 52. Okay, so we've not touched this part of your game no. yet, so let's see what you bring here. Yeah, it's a very neat little strike. A little far, but very neatly hit. So interesting point with pitching is when I get a student who can't stop standing the shaft up, Yeah. I get them to get a wedge, and I tell them to do it at 60 yards. Okay. Or 50 yards, whatever, yeah. kind of around that number. Because when you take power out of the idea of hitting the shot, yeah. they choose not to stand the club up. Yeah. So they I just let it that. swing around that. their body, they let yeah, it drop, yeah. they let it just flow, they don't put forces through the club. Yeah, yeah. So it's your interpretation often, I think, of how to put speed through the shot. Yeah. that makes you stand it up. Your idea of standing up is you thinking that's how I'm going to, it's not a conscious decision, but that's how I'm going to put force speed through this club. It's yeah. not true, but it's, that's why it's so hard to beat because you're, you're fighting your own feelings of what creates power. I, I, I know definitely if, if I'm trying to hit the ball hard, then I will this time. Pull on it, yeah, absolutely. But it's so, another good point to make from that then is if you are at a range and you're really struggling or you want to warm up, 50 yard pitches, yeah. feeling the handle coming through lower. Then grab a seven iron, 
hit 50 yard pitches with a seven iron yeah so it goes lower but like they land 50 and then work in 100 then 150 and up to your normal gaming speed yeah. i've done it with people who just refuse to change not by conscious decision to refuse to change they just can't get the feeling yeah and i build up from a wedge and often you get a few changing results quite early so it's quite a good way to practice it So a little thing to think about, the iron on that last hole, obviously we had to adjust your aim a bit because you're seeing a little bit of a draw, yep. where before you're used to the cut, so you're aiming left and then drawing it, got you to aim right and you drew it into the middle of the green, which is great. The driver, I don't know where to say to aim yet, but I fear it's still going to leak more yeah. to the right, so you're going to have to have a different aim for a club that you feel comfortable drawing, one with loft, yep. to you do with a driver. And that's not something to be scared about. I. Uh, I aim my rinky dinks in a different place, so I aim my five iron, which we talked about on the tee. I game my clubs, I don't try and make them all fall exactly into line. Yeah. So decent drive, Chris. I mean, he did me there by 10 yards and I hit mine, wow, and you healed it slightly. So yeah. speed is not a problem, is it? No, I mean, we saw no. that inside. You were swinging a seven iron at 90 miles an hour, which is faster than I'm swinging a seven iron. It's keeping that speed in play. So we're now 200 yards uphill into the wind. Chris hasn't got a hybrid. He's a five wood, which is about 220, which you said on the first and I didn't believe you, but I now do. <laughs> <laughs> um, I could try it, but he's got a four. I, it's too much. Yeah, the yeah. five wood is with your distance. I agree, it's too much. The five, a good five, I might reach, but it's a good one because we're into the wind to about one nine four, yeah. right? And there's a lot of wind now. Again, let's see what shape the five iron's getting, and let's move away from that ground while dropping that club. That's a little cuttier, isn't it? And higher. Yeah. How did you strike that? A bit toey, but... Okay, so again, when we call on more distance, you're going straight back to the standing up. Do you want to hit another one? Yeah, I'll hit another one. Again, don't worry about target. Really concentrate on letting that club drop behind you as much as possible, yeah. See, I love that. That's a straight ball. Yeah. So his aim is up the left because he's scared of the first shot. Then when he gets the proper club interaction with the ground, no shape. So you're going to go through this. You're going to yeah. have to just fight through it. Like, I don't know where to tell you to aim because I don't know if you can do it or not. When you do it, the shape's going to disappear. Yeah. When you don't well, do it... I mean, the, the only bad thing with that is probably a, either lost balls or your handicap's going to go up. Yeah, yeah, but we want it coming down. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> This is the journey, bro. Not, not the journey to 20. Brian <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> <laughs> Fantastic five wood, downwind, hit it long and nice, uh, about 148, but we've now got ball downhill lie, but above your feet, that's not nice. So let's see how you handle this. To be honest here, you almost your old action helps this lie better, because if you, those trees weren't there, you'd just start it down the right and draw it in. Let's see what you do. Yeah, again, that's getting away from the ground. Yeah. Go on, hit another. I want to see that conquered. That's two good five woods, because, yeah, you hit another one, didn't you? Yeah. This is like the narrowest part of the fairway. Impressive. We will do the divots after we've hit the second one for everyone going, oh, we're replacing these divots. So let's get up through that left leg this time. Get away from that ground.
very good hit. That's a very good shot. I think that's massive, isn't it? Is that in the road? Yep. That hit the tree. Yeah, your speed is off the bloody scales, bruh. <laughs> that is massive. You see the flight of that? It just kept going. Did you used to play cricket. Were you like uh, first batsman or something? Yeah. No. I uh, played hockey. Oh, so. yeah, yeah. Hockey, yeah. So. Speed in that. Yeah, that was massive. No wonder you like fatten them a bit. <laughs> it's like a person locky road ball. <laughs> There we go. Chris has some serious power, which is going to be brilliant, but it's also going to be dangerous. He's a classic stand up the shaft kind of guy. We've seen it on loads of daily vlog videos I've done, uh, struggling to control face, the path, and a little bit of path with that movement. Also then really struggling, obviously, to feel the different way to align the center of gravity of the club with the hand path to try and spin the club out. I do think he'll get there though. Post comments down below, let me know what you think. Do you think Chris will fix it? Will he change? Will he get his hand kept down? I honestly think he will. Four putt out there and I hit one of them with those two chips. Oh! How am I doing that? So let's hear you down below. Chris, he is our third contestant, our third journeyman. Will he hit his goals? Will he get that handicap down? Certainly has the power. Can he get the control? We will find out. <laughs>